Today I'm going to share with you 11 bits of advice I would give my 25 year old self. So let's go. Dream bigger. When I was about 18 or 19, I read my first self-help book by Tony Robbins called Awaken the Giant Within. And in that book, Tony Robbins said to write down your dreams in detail. So I did. And I wrote goals like, I want a company laptop, I want a company mobile phone, I want a company car, I want to travel for work, I want to live in Dubai, I want to wear designer suits, and I want to drive a Mercedes sports car. I achieved all those dreams by the time I was 28, and I was so disappointed. It's because I didn't set big enough goals. Set bigger goals. This is hard when your world is small. I'd lived at home all my young life. Even during university, I wasn't allowed to live in dorms. I had to commute from home. And I didn't read much, so I couldn't really see what I might become or what I could become. So to broaden your universe, read biographies of successful people. Because there's a danger that you will set your sights too low and you will hit it. And then you'll just have this existential crisis, <laughs> which is what happened to me. <laughs> brings me on to the next one. Achieving your goals will not make you happy. In my late 20s, I achieved all these small goals and I had an existential crisis, which is common for people who set goals and achieves them, regardless of how big or small. See, we think happiness lies on the other side of achieving these goals, but it doesn't. See, if you depend on goals to make you happy, what lies ahead of you is a wasteland of emptiness and meaninglessness. Is that a word? Meaninglessness. Well, it is now. The goalposts of these happiness always change. As soon as you hit them, you need to move the goalposts and set new goals. And then maybe then you'll be happy. Let me set that goal and then maybe I'll be happy. It's never ending and it's never enough. So don't let goals use you. Instead, use goals to create you. To find your passion, pursue whatever you are vaguely interested in. So you find your passion by doing things. You've got to experience and you've got to immerse yourself in these activities to really know whether you like it or not. I didn't realize my passion for public speaking until my late 30s. And it wasn't until my late 40s I discovered my passion for endurance running and improvised comedy. I discovered them simply by trying it. When you don't know what to do, focus on building transferable skills. Being expected to know what you want to do for the rest of your life when you've just finished university or school is absurd, isn't it? Very few people know what they want to do. And the chances are what you think you want to do isn't actually what you want to do. It's likely you've been conditioned by parents or culture that you should take this path. So it's not truly what you want to do. Like for me, it was be a doctor. I, I, I believe that that's what I had to do. I hated it. So when you don't know what you want to do, go for jobs where you will learn valuable transferable skills. When I joined the workforce, I had this intuitive voice telling me to get a job in sales, which sounded ridiculous to me because I was socially awkward, painfully shy. The idea of selling terrified me. But then that intuitive voice told me, well, you could do this for a year. These selling skills, you will need them. If you became a lawyer, you had to persuade people. Or if you went into government and policy, it requires persuading people. I was quite clueless and naive and silly and that much I knew that the ability to persuade people is useful in all areas of life. So that's the job I pursued. Stick to one or two new things for a while so you learn to master it. After I finished my master's, I put learning and self-development on a back burner and I just threw myself in my job. So while I learned a critical valuable skill in my job, persuading people, I didn't really learn any new skills for a while. The only constant is change and becoming a lifelong learner, which really means learning how to learn fast, will make you adaptable and resilient in any economy. And with that, you gain incredible confidence because you know no matter what, you're gonna be okay. You are not your thoughts. In my early 20s, I was a chronic overthinker and warrior. I had eating disorders and suicidal thoughts. Realizing that I wasn't my thoughts was a massive breakthrough that put me on the path of becoming a version of myself that I more wanted to be. You create your future. I didn't want to kill myself. I just 
just had no desire to live. So I didn't push myself, I didn't try very hard. I just thought it was all pointless. What a waste. I didn't think there was any point because I thought my future was set. You're gonna have to get ma an arranged marriage and this is your life and there you go. So what's the point of doing anything? Your future is not set. You create your future by the thoughts and actions that you do today. Just do your best. It's okay you like women. It took me eight years to come out to my friends. I remember I told one of them over Hotmail Messenger. I don't even know if that thing exists anymore. But I remember I was typing, I've got something to tell you. And she said, what, have you got cancer? I said, no, I'm gay. She went, oh, is that it? And that was that. And know that you will find love. You will find the most loving, the most generous, the most kind, amazing person who respects and loves you and accepts you for who you are. It's all about the tears. Right. Confidence comes with action. I lack confidence in my 20s and I was deeply insecure. I mean, aren't we all? But I was arrogant and I had this cold front exterior. It's like this armor to protect me so no one could see how deeply insecure I was. But what I realized was confidence is linked to doing more things, taking risks, dance with discomfort, because you will gain confidence from taking action and facing fears. See, confidence is strongly linked to courage and courage requires you to face your fears. With confidence, you grow strong on the inside so you can shed all that protective layering and be the awesome you that you are because you are enough. Friendships are about quality, not quantity. So in my mid-twenties, I left my school years behind and I begin my journey into work life and so did the friends from university. It's a popular time for that friendship tree to shake and most of them fall off. So now you have to make new friends. Having friends is not about a popularity contest. The thing is, it's harder now because of Facebook and you see the numbers and you see the followers and so on. It can feel like a competition, but it's actually better to have a few great friends than lots of not so great friends. Focus on a small number of people and have in-person contact with them because you can have 10 friends and feel lonely and have two friends and feel connected. Stay away from people who, who are energy vampires, who want to use you for their benefit, and you will know the ones that I'm talking about. And be around people who lift you up. Happiness is a choice. In every moment, we have a choice to choose the darkness or choose the light. There is always something to appreciate and be grateful for, no matter your circumstances. This is really hard to hear when you're going through a lot. It's very hard to hear. But if I could reach back to myself in my mid-twenties, I was not happy. I realize now it is a choice. It's easier to choose the darkness, but it's worthwhile if you choose happiness. Things were not going so right in my life in my mid-twenties. I started making decisions and I started making moves. But I really wish I'd known this about the mistakes I was making when things weren't going right. So watch this episode next so you avoid those mistakes. Thanks for watching. I'm Anise Kizzlebash. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get more. And I'll see you in another episode. Bye.